we are not a threat. We're not a threat to the demonic world. We're not a threat to the um, world system of government. I'm not here to change it. I'm not here to change the world. I'm not here to change, you know, the universe of uncertainty. And I'm not here to change um, demonic realms. I am here that everything be in its right, right place. And it will be anyway. You can rail against the world system, you won't change it. It's here to give opportunity for people to practice good and evil. The world will modify what goes on as it does, but it will basically remain the outside of the garden. And perhaps there is some future date when it will not be needed, but well, perhaps there will be another realm that does something, does it and even better in some way. But for the time being, I'm not here to change it. It's with God. And it's the same with hell. I'm not here to change it. God is able to change hell yesterday, if he so wishes. He has it for a reason. I trust it to him. And even if it's something that is beyond even God, I still trust it to God that he's handling things in the best way possible. Okay, so that's partly why, you know, the demons will um, obey a person of prayer and fasting because they are of God and God does have demons exist and do get the activity that they get. But it's well defined. And if God says it includes this area, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And he's able to enforce that. So you don't go against it. So, Christian has it from, I think it's the letters uh, that we obey our masters set over us. Nobody says they're godly. In fact, they're very often the princes of this world. But we're here to obey them. And incidentally, that does give us some measure of civilization, albeit not a heavenly um, um, situation. It's a situation of this universe of uncertainty and change and good and bad and uh, experience with each and learning. And it has its function. And part of its function is that we're under principalities and powers. We give unto Caesar what Caesar's, and unto God what is God's. What is God's? It's to love him and own him as our Heavenly Father. That his values are our values, his will our will. Sure, we're creative and we're individual as he is, but we're in harmony with him. And that harmony with him is that he allows much of this world you can cut across it at any time and it'd be madness to go against God on any issue and, and, and demons who, know, who experience fear know this better than anyone they're struggling with fear all the time we the children don't know this so well We are casual with God. He's our friend. We eat with him. We live with him. He dwells in us. Wow. 
You know, the angel Gabriel says, I stand in the presence of God and you don't believe me. You'll be struck dumb until the day that, I don't know, the child's named, whatever it is. Or his um, circumcision, whatever it is, yeah. His, oh, his naming, his name is John. And uh, he's got his voice back. I mean, the, April, the angel Gabriel says this. You know, I stand in the presence. We don't stand, we sit at table. The whole Lord's Supper is you sit at table with Jesus who has God. And God is in you. Wow. So we're in a staggering position if you own God as your Heavenly Father. And you don't go against what the heir apparent says. The prince of the realm, whose dad is king. <laughs> it's not wise to go against what he suggests. So you have this authority. Hmm. Wow. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So in comment here, I'd add, uh, more in summary, that this outside of the garden experience is the classroom, in a sense. It's, it's our learning situation. We observe. I'm not here to turn the outside of the garden into the inside of heaven. I'm not here to do that. I'm outside in the universe to learn. Uh, while I'm outside, I'm subject to what's going on out here. Subject in a different way, though, to what the people are that if you like, are not born again, that are not the children of God. As a child of God, I'm here learning. I have a very special status. I'm a child of God outside of the garden in the world. From the point of view of the world. But from my point of view, I'm in the kingdom of heaven. It's within I have God and Jesus with me, one with me, and they are teaching me by the Holy Spirit what all this story outside the garden is about. And I'm being read a story. You know, what you call the real world is in fact story time. It's only here for a brief instant, it flashes past and things change and we go on to another story and something else is being taught to us, you see. The stories teach us. Now the world takes the outside of the garden as the reality and the inside the garden, the gospel if you like, the story of Jesus, as a story. But the children of God don't. The inside of the garden is the real world, the real reality, the true reality. And the outside of the garden is the story. It's just a lesson. It's something being taught and having taught, achieved what it's meant to do. Oh, it's all rubbed out. Clean the board and we have another lesson. We're going to do so and so now. Oh, right. You don't say, no, no, no. I want to carry on the other story, please. I want to carry on the other story indefinitely. I want just that. I want just that. I want, oh, my goodness gracious me. This child, what's the matter with him? <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the teacher here? You or me? 
Uh, I suppose if you insist, we could. Um, I mean, it's going to hold us up a bit. It's not ideal, and I could carry on with this particular story until he gets sick of it. Then he'll be insistent. Why haven't you changed? I want something else. I want something else. You know, this child needs to mature. Goodness gracious. <laughs> but anyway, they grow up. We just live with it. We abide it. And God does abide with us. And we do learn. But we could have a much easier time of it if we're of a disposition that simply recognizes this is a story time and uh, it's being read to us. We're outside in the sense that we're looking at we're being taught in the world of uncertainty, change, time and matter and space. But it's not our reality, it's as a dream. My reality is when I'm with God. When I'm aware of God. And I can keep this awareness outside. And we go home. At night, in the evening, to God. All our needs are met, including, you see, during the day. Learning. Seeing what's happening in the garden. I don't know if you can remember, but your early schooling was in fact at home. By home now I mean the garden inside the boundary of your family home. Your, your family's home, house and garden. Might have just been a yard. Might have just been the neighborhood that's reasonably safe. You know, in physical terms. And you could play. And you could fantasize this, that, and the other. Play cops and robbers, or cowboys and Indians, or play with the ball, or climb around the trees and imagine and see things from a different angle from the top of a tree, or not too near the top of it. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. <laughs> um, you were learning, you were in a learning situation then. It was allowing your imagination to run and be creative. Mm. The garden's very useful, isn't it? Because we see the garden as safe, it's home. It's strongly, obviously, contained and controlled and protected. And outside the garden, when you go to school, well, they all ask a bit more. <laughs> We're adjusting to the world, and the kids are very scared of going to school, or many of them are anyway. You know, because you suddenly realize you're stepping outside of the safety bounds that you're used to and you've always had. But in fact, that is um, still actually a controlled environment. You know, Kids are, um, in some sense, protected and controlled at school. Uh, not obviously now by the parent, uh, but by some other authority which you're not at all happy with because you're not quite used to that. You're used to the familiarity of home. But if you have this confidence of uh, what you gained from home and your parents, well, you manage school okay, and parents have said to you, well, do what you're told at school, huh? And, uh, well, you can tell me in the evening, if you have any problems, you let me know. I can always come up to school and see if, uh, if things need to be um, addressed or not, you know. Okay. Do you see you can be a good child of God in the world? You're not causing the teacher or the school any trouble. You, bell rings, you go out to play, and bell rings, you come in, you know, finish the lesson, and when the lesson finishes, you go home, and we don't send you to school to change the school system. Tell the teacher what he's t supposed to be teaching you and how he's meant to be behaving. 
He didn't do that. When we say to mum, Miss Sansa, Sansa, that wasn't very kind. Hmm. Oh, well, she's got a lot of people in the class. Um, try and fit around it. I mean, yeah, she is, she's a bit strange lady, it not in some ways. <laughs> but she's okay, love. I mean, if you really have trouble, I mean, we'll see if come up and say something to her or we'll shift your classes. In other words, you have the assurance that um, mum and dad will still be effective in protecting you outside of the home. Even though you're at school and you can't, you don't see them until the evening. So you can be at peace in the school and, and, and quite conforming. Um, you're learning, you're observing. Oh, this is interesting, this is totally different. This is, this is not mum and dad. Uh, what's going on here? You know, we're still useful. We learn some very interesting things. We had a story about so-and-so today. Oh, oh, that was good. <laughs> you might talk it over and say, well, what did this mean? Do you realize what it means? Why are they giving you the story? No. No, I just thought it was fun. Yeah, well, they're actually pointing out that, you know, these are the goodies and those are the baddies and what we mean by good and what we mean by bad. And, well, that's what the Holy Spirit does with us, isn't it? Tells us what the story is about. Oh, is that what it meant? Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Father. You see, it's not that we need the authority to control what is outside the garden. We need to simply know in our hearts that God controls, has the authority outside of the garden, not just inside the home, which is in the Garden of Eden. Do you see the difference? I'm not seizing power. I'm a child of God. My God exercises all the power with all the wisdom that could ever be needed. That's why I flourish. That's why I seem so happy, so confident, so full of life, so glowing with joy. Because I'm my father's son, my dad's daughter. And I blossom and flourish accordingly. Because you see, he has come that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father.